Hey, uh, this is the video presentation for my uh, report on George Orwell's Animal Farm. Uh, okay, so about the author. Eric Arthur Blair, George Orwell, was born in 1903 in India where his father worked for the civil service. The family moved to England in 1907 and in 1917 Orwell entered Eton where he contributed regularly to various college magazines. From 1922 to 1927, he served with the Indian Imperial Police in Burma, an experience that inspired his uh, first novel, Burmese Days, 1934. Several years of poverty followed. He lived in Paris for two years before returning to England, where he worked successfully as a private tutor school teacher and bookshop assistant, and contributed reviews and articles to a number of periodicals. Down and Out in Paris and London was published in 1933. In 1936, he was commissioned by Victor, Victor Gollens to visit areas of mass unemployment in Lanshire and Yorkshire. And the road to Wigan Pier, 1937, is a powerful description of poverty he saw there. At the end of 1936, Orwell went to Spain to fight for the Republicans and was wounded. Homage to Catalonia is his account of the Civil War. He was admitted to a sanatorium in 1938 and from then on was never fully fit. He spent six months in Morocco and there he wrote, Coming up for air, during the Second World War, he served in the Home Guard and worked for the BBC Eastern Service from 1941 to 1943. A literary editor, a literary editor of Tribune, he contributed a regular page of political and literary commentary, and he also wrote for the Observer and later the Manchester Evening News. His unique political allegory, Animal Farm, was published in 1945, and it was, and this was, and, and it was this novel, together with 1984, 1949, which brought him worldwide fame. George Orwell died in January 1950, a few days before Desmond McCarthy had sent him a message of greeting, in which it wrote. You have made an remarkable, indelible mark on English literature. You are among the few memora uh, memorable writers of your generation. About the text, Animal Farm was published in England on, sev on the 17th of August, 1945. One year later in the United States on, uh, yeah. On the Animal Farm, the total print run of Orwell's nine books in Britain America amounted to some 19, 195,500 copies. Of these, 47,079 were of the road to Wigan Pier, 100, and 115,000 were Penguin editions of Down and Out in uh, Paris and London in Burmese days. Shortage of paper after, the, after World War II restricted the number of copies of Animal Farm printed in Britain, but 25,500 copies have been issued by the time Orwell died in January 1915, and 590 copies in America. These figures give quantitative support to the enormous and in immediate success of Animal Farm, and they are backed up by the range of and variety of the translations made during the few remaining years of Orwell's life translations into all the principal uh, European languages as well as Persian, Telugu, Icelandic, and Ukrainian. But what genre of book was being offered to these different publics? The most important textual variant of Animal Farm affects its title page. Orwell called his book Animal Farm, a fairy story. This is the description given, to, uh, given in all editions published by Seeker and Warburg and Penguin Books. But the Americans dropped a fairy story from the outset. One of the many publishers who declined to publish Animal Farm in Britain and America did so because he considered there was no market for children's books. Only in Telugu, 
of all the translations made in Orwell's lifetime was a fairy story retained. In other translations, a subtitle was dropped or became a satire, a co contemporary satire, or was described as an adventure story or tale. This is not a place to discuss the significance of the original subtitle, except perhaps to point out that it stems from Orwell's abiding fascination for fairy stories and the like encountered during early childhood in his works as a teacher and his time at the BBC. Now, Animal Farm. I have writ instead of writing out the entire story word for almost word for word describing each chapter, I have decided to instead only write out a short summary. Uh, that being said, I have left out the Battle of the Cowshed, as well as the construction of the first windmill. I've I've only left in the construction of the second windmill as to shorten my load and not have to, so I would not have to add so much to it. Now, Animal Farm. Oh, and I almost forgot, I left out Squealer entirely because um, with my summary, he's not that important. You could tell the entire, entire story without him, but as this book is an allegory for what did happen during, during, after, and following soon to modern days of when of the Russian Revolution and it, it's an allegory for the Russian Revolution and when um, Joseph Stalin was in power so Squealer's character is important in that way but retelling the story as a summary you do not need to explain his character so it just adds up the story starts off by introducing us to a drunken farmer Mr. Jones as he stumbles around while locking up his farm for the night. And as he goes to bed, uh, the animals of his farm gather in the main barn house for a meeting. The meeting is held by the oldest and most respected animal out of, uh, out of them all, the prized pig boar, Old Major. Old Major called the meeting to discuss something with his many companions before he passed. He spoke of a dream he had that previous night. It was about a song he had heard in his youth that told of the freedom of animal kind and the overthrowing of man. Uh, however, before he had this dream, he could only remember a small amount of the melody and none of the words. But this dream had taught him once again of the entire song. Its name is Beasts of England, which the rest of the animals took to singing as soon as Old Major had started his tune. Once the song was finished, Old Major had hushed them and started to explain that man was nothing but greed and evil, that man survive, survives off of exploiting animal kind, and that revolution is the only way to be free of man. This meeting was excited, had excited all the animals to the point where it woke up Mr. Jones, and his response to the noise was to fire off two shots from his gun into the air, which sent the animals running to their beds and ending the meeting quite quickly. The next morning, Old Major was found dead in his bed, and before Mr. Jones had awoken, the animals had Old Major buried. After the prized pig boar was laid to rest, the animals went to eat, but found no food, so they broke into the food shed and started to eat. Mr. Jones had found the animals like this and grabbed a whip to get them out of his shed. But this had only angered the animals, and they chased after him, forcing him off of his farm, which made the farm theirs. Once they had finally settled down, two pigs had taken up the position of leadership amongst the others. Snowball and Napoleon were their names, and they had a lot of ideas. However, Snowball had ideas that would truly help the farm. He had the idea to create a windmill so that they could bring electricity to the farm. So that they may have heat in the winter and lights at night. While Snowball was, sol while Snowball was solving a power problem, Napoleon was solving another power problem. Napoleon had kept the young puppies from their mother so that he may have his own guard dogs. Snowball had called together a meeting so that he could show off, the, uh, show off to the rest of the animals his plans for the windmill and had started his speech with the promise of a five-day week. Napoleon objects to this. Snowball re um, rebuts with a three-day week. With the promise of a three-day week, Napoleon objects once again. And Snowball returns with the promise of a one-day week. This final promise had excited the animals quite a bit, but this only angered Napoleon, and with one loud screech, 
his guard dogs had ran into the barn house and chased after Snowball. Snowball bolted as fast as he could to get away from the dogs, but he wasn't fast enough, and the dogs had caught up to him and killed him. When the dogs had returned, they had reported to Napoleon that they had killed Snowball, and he had took to the stage immediately, picked up Snowball's plans and claimed them as his own. The next day, the pigs had taken Mr. Jones' house as their own so that they could oversee the work of, on the windmill. Boxer the cart horse, who was the strongest and most reliable worker and of any of the animals, had, and his devoted friend Benjamin the donkey, had taken to the windmill project immediately. And the rest of the animals, except for the pigs, all started to work too. Once the windmill had finished, Jones and his men had shown up to take back the farm. This battle between the animals and the men had landed quite a few ca animal casualties, and Boxer had gotten himself wounded in the process. And, th and as the animals had thought they had victory, the windmill had been blown to smithereens. Jones had blown up the windmill with dynamite, killing himself in the process. With the winter upon them, and the food running short for any animal that wasn't a pig, everyone had become weak and slow, but the windmill needed to be rebuilt and Boxer had once again taken to the windmill immediately. However, he was too weak to work and had crushed himself under a block of stone. But he did not kill himself, and Benjamin was the first to reach his friend. Boxer had been resting in his stable with Benjamin when what was first believed to be an ambulance had rolled onto the farm to take Boxer away. Benjamin had got a, uh, gotten a closer look at the ambulance and saw the death wagon symbol on the back. He tried to warn the other animals, but he was too late. Boxer was placed into the car and was being taken away to the glue factory. The animals chased after the car, but could not reach the car in time, and it sped off, leaving Benjamin alone and the, family with, uh, and the farm without strength. Once the animals had returned, Napoleon had called a meeting, uh, and when he finished, and when he had finished his speech, he. Uh, he reminded them of Boxer's two favorite maxims, I will work harder and Comrade Napoleon is always right. Many years later, when the work and sacrifice done for the windmill was forgotten, the pigs had created something quite similar to human civilization, but it was really only for themselves. Benjamin had followed a group of pigs toward a barn house, where he had found Napoleon unveiling a new rule to the other animals, and it read as follows. All animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. And, and that night, the rest of the animals had peeked into the windows of the house that the pigs had lived in and saw them celebrating uh, the unveiling of the new rule. For some reason, the animals couldn't see the pigs as pigs, but rather as people. They couldn't see the difference between man and boar and vice versa. Now, uh, for my character that I've chosen, I've chosen Boxer, as Boxer is objectively the most important character in the entire story. His and his own demise um, changes the outlook of how the animal, the rest of the animals, see the pigs. And I've written the same underneath that subtitle: Boxer, Boxer, the cart horse is objectively the most important character in the story as his own demise shows the rest of the animals just how worse their lives have been now that the pigs are in charge. Boxer had shown his character when he had shown the reader just how dedicated he is to his friends. For example, when they, when they had worked on the first windmill, he would work himself dry and tell himself to work harder, and he would even get up extra hours earlier than the others, just to continue working on the windmill. This got himself severely wounded when he worked way more than before on the last windmill. I didn't put it in the second windmill because that wouldn't be correct. Um, though I could have put in uh, first and the second windmill and then mentioned the last windmill as the third windmill, but I didn't include the falling down of the first windmill in my summary, so it wouldn't have made any sense here. Sorry about that. Uh, this got him himself severely wounded when he worked way more than he way more than before on the last window. His death had shown the animals just how sick, twisted, and greedy the pigs really are. However, the worst part of this was how the animals couldn't even save themselves from the pigs as they had too much to use against the rest of the animals. Now, 
from my lesson that I've learned. The lesson I have taken from the story is that standing up against those who crack the whip while you're stuck with a group that follows the one with the whip will start an uprising. However, there will always be somebody who wants to crack the whip, so the cycle never breaks. That's my report on George Orwell's Animal Farm. Uh, it is currently 8.42 a.m. I'm going to go back to sleep.